Hey, welcome back to another video. A lot of you guys have been asking us how we do the airlift. Today I'm gonna to show you guys the full breakdown of the airlift setup, even getting everything out of the box, showing you guys what it comes with, and explaining some things for it. So the airlift kit, if you buy it on a if you buy it on airlift, if you buy it at Summit, if you buy it from a lot of people, it'll come with the air tank and one compressor. If you want to get two compressors, you have to buy a separate harness for it and obviously uh, a compressor kit. And if you're going to do that, I always recommend getting just the actual airlift manifold and then buying stuff separately because this isn't a one size fits all kit i mean you can always add that extra second harness but if you don't like the size tank that it comes with you're gonna have to buy another tank like we did in this case so if you want to buy the exact same kit there it is you can buy the same thing you can order it from summit or airlift up to you packing list so right off the bat it comes with some airline and some fittings they also include with this kit some tank hardware that's pretty nice not everybody does that So inside the box, there's gonna be two other boxes, smaller boxes. In this box, if you wanna buy this particular kit, you can just look up that number and you'll be able to get just the compressor. In this box, we have a compressor. We got a Vire 444. One of the best compressors in my opinion, unless you want to go to 485. They're a lot, they're bigger and they do push more air and quicker. And then we also have the air filter there. Make sure you guys don't forget to put these on. Some hardware. This box we have the main thing. Oh, come on. We have the airlift. I'm pretty sure this is a manifold. We got the manifold, the control, and some some connectors that it comes with. Another box. So airlift. I don't think Accurate does it. I didn't do it before. They give you some airline. It all comes in the kit. I want to say it's like 60 feet of airline, and it'll come with three eighths if you get a three eighths kit, or quarter inch if you get a quarter inch kit. Come with the water trap. I always recommend putting this on. Um, you don't want water in your manifold. It'll start eating up the seals and stuff. And then a read wrong. We got some more fittings. And one of the main things is this. 
the wiring harness, it all comes pre-loomed. The wire, the relay is already pre-wired. So, if you've never installed one of these, I highly recommend you read the booklet. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it shows you how to do everything. Here we have the remote. This is one of the biggest things in the box. The airlift manifold. With this one, we went with the three eighths to push to connect. But they do sell the ones that have the fittings in case you guys want to get fancy and use the hard line. You can use the hard line. You can also use hard line on this. I've used it before. It's just, you know, it just depends on what you want to do. Bunch of zip ties. Man, that's a lot of zip ties actually. Look, a lot of times I've had to fix trucks that come in here with leaking bags. It's not actually the bag, it's the airline. Make sure you use this to cut your lines. Make sure the line's sitting on both sides and it'll cut it straight. Do not use a razor blade. They will always leak. In here, you have some more connectors, a fuse, and the wire to your remote. Do not lose that. One of the best things about this kit and why I always like to use it, not only because I like it way better than valves, that's a personal opinion, though, don't judge me. Um, they come pre-wired and pre-loomed which makes it really nice it protects it from all the elements and even some scratching this harness has the two wires that go to the compressor this goes to the manifold this is your relay for your compressor and then you start working your way up and the nice thing about airlift is that if you ever want to do the height sensors the harnesses come pre-wired, so all you have to do is plug this in to the harness that goes through your sensor, and then you just keep routing it. You route it, you route it. Keep routing it. And then you have your USB for your control. You have your, your pink wire that goes to the ignition. And then you have your ground and your positive which goes i do it straight to the battery or if you have a fuse behind the battery you can do that as you can do that as well make sure you always put a fuse on this pink one um it comes with the fuse for the power wire a lot of times people don't do that but i always recommend it it's just extra safety so install is pretty straightforward guys it comes with two holes in it. They are threaded. The kit also includes some bolts and typically you should already have a mounting bracket, which we do here. If you don't, you just gotta drill some holes out, three eighths. You can see the bolt in there. I always recommend putting a Loctite on this, really on anything. Um, on th in this case, we use some of that blue one. That way, if it has to come off for whatever reason, you can still take it off and you won't have to use fire. Use it at your discretion. Do not blame me because you fuck up your threads because you put too much Loctite on there. So, when it comes to routing the wiring, guys, I don't feel like there's a right or wrong way to do it. I mean, obviously, if you leave it just hanging, I feel like that's the wrong way. What I mean by right or wrong is a lot of people will criticize you if they see these. These are really cheap, you know, 
They're called self tappers. In the, in some areas, it might be called something different. But um, you can use self tappers for that, for the grommet holder, or whatever it's called, the ring terminals. I have no clue what the correct term for that is, honestly. But I use them. That's what I like to use whenever there's nothing to hold on to. Another way of doing it, which is what some people are going to tell you is the correct way of doing it, are these. These are nut certs. So the way these work is you drill, you know, set plate of aluminum, metal, you know, whatever it is you're working on. And you use a special tool for this. And that tool is going to put pressure up against here. And it's going to collapse it. And then you can install your bolt. Typically, I go this route. If a customer wants me to do that, that is more work. And they're aware that that costs more. Um, in occasions like this, I could have used a self-tapper going this way. But I didn't because the fuel cell is going to be right here. So I'm just trying to avoid any any kind of sharp objects, you know, coming this way, which, you know, just some some insurance. But there's really no right or wrong way of doing this other than if you just leave it loose. In some cases, you got to use a combination of all of them. Like, for example, here, I use the, the zip tie. But you can use a zip tie, self-tapper, nuts, or... And then you use these, which is that right there. You know, there's different sizes. Just get whatever size works for you. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the harness for the compressor. And then this plug right here is a plug that goes to the secondary compressor relay. Already integrated, so you don't have to do any more wiring whenever you do add another compressor. At the end of the day, guys, it really just depends on how you want to do it. I've seen people make the frames so that you can stick the wiring, you know, completely through it. And then you won't ever see wiring. Um, I've seen people, you know, they'll take all this loom off and then they'll do their own loom. Like, it just depends how you want to do it. Just make sure you don't leave everything loose. Like in this case right here, you know, we'll put a zip tie here and then we'll zip tie these together right here as well. And just make sure you don't leave nothing loose and you install everything. Make sure everything's tied up and out of the way of anything. And give it a little tug. That way, you know, it'll you'll basically be pretending like if something's tugging on it or I don't know, you know. But let's keep going. Another tip, guys, and this is just my opinion. You don't have to listen to it. You don't have to listen to anything I say, as a matter of fact. Ditch the original hardware that comes with these compressors. Take it out and get you some grade 8 hardware. Because the original ones, and this is just from my personal experience, they tend to break or they'll come loose. Get you some grade 8 and get you a lock nut and they won't come off. Just make sure you tighten them. There you have it guys, the power wire with the fuse, the ground wire, we ran it through the inside. That way you don't have wires just hanging around. This guy's debating on bagging the front, so this might have to get redone in the future. Um, ain't no worry though, you just gotta extend the harness again. If you, we like to put the battery back there so we'd probably just take it out again and reroute it a different way. But as of right now, it's right here because this is where he has his battery. After it's all said and done, guys, you end up with this. Um, the water trap's right there. You know, you plug up the ports and tank that you're not going to use. Everything is tied in, so there's nothing loose. 
one of the things that is gonna happen is typically these have to be calibrated but since this one doesn't have bags in the front what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have to bypass it for right now and he's gonna have to keep doing it like this or I'm gonna see if I can attach two lines on the back and then hopefully they'll be like dummies and they might want to calibrate but the last time I did that it didn't work like I said this one's only back in the back On the white one, we did the same thing, guys. Everything was just, you know, ran differently. On this one, we went with the quarter inch line. This one's bagged all around, so we were able to calibrate this one. I didn't show you guys how we brought the wires because every single vehicle is different, so there's really no point in me showing that. You guys can just do that however you want to. Just make sure they're nicely tucked and everything. <laughs> 